presentation. Cool. Hey, everyone. I'm Christine, and I'm a te technical account manager at GoDaddy. Uh, I've been on both the merchant and software sides of e-commerce. I started a long time ago using this thing called Magento for our local furniture store. Um, from there, I dabbled a bit in Shopify before going off and just doing completely different things. Um, and now I work primarily in technical support and customer success for shops using WooCommerce and sometimes Shopify. Um, and my name, <laughs> I actually have two names, an English name and a Vietnamese name. Um, my English name, I think my aunt just named me because my mom didn't really know English at the time. Um, so my aunt named me and Fun fact, I have an aunt with the exact same name. So there's two Christine Foods in our in our family. Um, but yeah, so I go by Christine for English and in Vietnamese, I have a different name. So I guess that's that's my story. And should I start the presentation now? Take it off, take it off. What's that? I can't, I can't hear. <laughs> Good. All right, cool. I'm going to share my screen. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay, what, what do you see? Because I have two monitors and I want to make sure you're seeing the right one. We're seeing the right one. All right, cool. Cool. So, hello and welcome. Welcome to start with the big three when setting up your WooCommerce shop. Um, I'm here to help you set up payment gateways, taxes, and shipping options, all essential things you need to set up when selling online. And well, I already introduced myself, so I'm just gonna skip over this and we could go over what we're gonna cover today. So we're gonna start off with the basics of payment gateways. What are payment gateways and how do you choose one? I'm gonna show you some helpful extensions that you could use to set up payments for your shop. Um, and then we're gonna go over the fastest ways to set up taxes because no one likes to spend time on taxes. Uh, I definitely don't like to spend time on taxes. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some useful extensions and strategies for shipping. Uh, that would be helpful if you have like a physical store that you need to ship stuff out of. Um, then at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. And these are all um, really complex topics that could each have their own presentation. And today we're only going to go over like the basics and fundamentals to help you get started because going into each of them would just take a really long time. So let's talk about payment gateways. Um, what are payment gateway plugins? And I think to understand what the plugins do, you have to understand what a payment gateway does. Um, so imagine you're at your favorite grocery store and you're checking out and you're using your credit or debit card um, like on the little machine where you where you check out. That's called the payment terminal. And on the terminal, when you have your card inserted, it says, something like processing, do not remove your card. So what's happening there is um, the device is taking your payment details and it's sending it to a payment gateway. And then that payment gateway decides if your transaction should be approved or declined. And it sends that information back to the device so you can finish your purchase. 
So a payment gateway plugin, it basically replaces that physical device for your online shop. So when a customer goes to check out, instead of tapping, tapping their card or inserting it or sliding it on a physical device, they're entering in their card number and then they submit the payments. And it's basically the same process. It collects your payment details and sends it to the payment gateway. And then the payment gateway connects back to your store so you could complete your purchase. Um, so that was a lot. I, I hope uh, you guys are able to follow that. Um, but basically a payment gateway plugin connects your shop to a payment gateway so you can accept credit and debit card payments. And if you don't have one, you will lose customers. Um, if customers don't have a way to check out, then they're gonna get frustrated. And if they're not, and if they're like a first time customer, then there's a big chance that, that you'll probably lose them forever because you've lost that trust um, by not giving them a way to check out. So there's a lot of payment gateway plugins. Um, these are a few of them. Um, the biggest one is PayPal. It's like an all-in-one solution because it's also a payment gateway and processor. Uh, it's, a, it's a big name. Most people know PayPal. Uh, most people trust PayPal. So it's a good option to have for your customers because if it's, especially if it's a first time customer and they don't feel comfortable like inputting their credit card information into your site, um, they might feel more comfortable doing it through PayPal. Um, so yeah, it's a good option. Another one is authorized.net. Uh, that's a common one among merchants. Um, and our very own GoDaddy Payments, also known as Point. Um, I've been testing that one a few for a few days. And it's, it's pretty good. Um, I've set up a lot of payment gateways and it, some of them are really annoying. And uh, GoDaddy Payments has a pretty good experience, in my opinion. Um, I'm not just saying that because I work at GoDaddy. It really is a pretty uh, good experience. And there's a lot of updates too because we have more control over it. So pretty soon merchants are going to be able to connect their physical store with their online store through GoDaddy Payments. Um, and you're gonna be able to do that easier. And if anybody has ever done that before, you know how hard it is to connect your physical store to your online store. Um, so that's a big plus. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of other ones. So that brings us to how to choose the payment gateway. Um, there's, there's so many and and there's a lot of things to consider. Um, it really it really depends on your business needs and what you anticipate your customer needing and your budget. Um, I would also look for things like, is the support good? Is it easy to set up? What fees are there? Because usually there's multiple fees. For example, if you have a separate payment gateway, and processor, there may be, you know, there's probably gonna be fees for the gateway and the processor. So those are things to consider. Um, and do you want like an all-in-one solution or do you want it to be separate? It's, it really depends on your store and what you need. So I recommend going through like this list of questions to help you choose. Um, it's, it's really important to get that set up correctly in the beginning. So it's completely worth it to spend time comparing payment gateways um, because it's it's just a pain if you figure out later later along the road that the the one you chose doesn't have something you need like specific security features or or um, some type of currency or it doesn't accept subscriptions or something like that. So yeah, I, I recommend spending that time to choose the payment gateway upfront. All right, 
Uh, next up, collecting sales tax. Uh, first of all, I'm not a tax professional. Every time somebody mentions taxes, my eyes just glaze over. Uh, I hate talking about taxes. So don't listen to me when it comes to taxes. However, I could show you the fastest and most reliable way to set up your taxes for your store. Um, and one of the first things you should consider is just please set up your taxes properly from the beginning. Um, hire a tax professional to audit everything if you need to, because reconsolidating and reimbursing is a pain. If you figure out later on that you've been charging the wrong sales tax, um, yeah, I've seen some merchants have to deal with that, and it's it's not fun. Um, and yeah, automate your taxes because. Uh, why make yourself miserable? Taxes are miserable to deal with. So just automate them and, and move on. Uh, so there's a couple of ways you could automate your taxes. Uh, one of them is with WooCommerce Ava Tax. You need a paid account with Arvalara, but I, I think it's worth it. It frees up a lot of your time and it reduces a lot of mistakes um, because it's, it automatically calculates your taxes at checkout. So you don't need to do anything manually except setting up your account. Um, and if you take a look at the tax rate changes from 2009 to 2019, it's been like 6,500 tax rate changes. It's insane. Nobody could keep up with that. So WooCommerce Ava Tax helps you with that because it automates everything. Um, but also, like if you're selling just within one city and you think you could manually set the tax for that one city, uh, that gets tricky also because the dividing lines for taxes um, would not be what you expect. For example, I had a colleague um, where his neighborhood, the dividing line for one set of taxes and another was a street behind him. So in that situation, manually setting your taxes by city um, won't work. And it gets even more complex if you sell across state or like cross border. Um, yeah, specifically if you sell internationally, it's a pain to set up, but Ava Tax has like a cross border feature that you could just uh, set up and it just basically does everything automatically for you. And you could also report your taxes um, in the same in the same Avalara account. So it's kind of like a complete sales tax management system, which is pretty sweet because sales tax is really complex. Another one you could use is WooCommerce tax. It also automatically calculates sales tax at checkout. Um, it has less features than Ava Tax. Uh, like it doesn't have cross border, I think, um, or address validation or reporting and submission, things like that. But it really, it depends on your store. Um, yeah, it depends on you need, what you need. Do you need like a complete sales tax management system or do you just want something really light because you're only selling to one city or something? Um, it really depends on what you need, but I recommend just, just to automate your taxes either way. You could just set it and forget it and, and move on with life. And that said, let's move on to shipping. And there's things you should consider for shipping also, like are you shipping internationally? Um, do you want to provide free shipping or discounted shipping or flat rate shipping? Uh, because depending on your answers to those, you might need like a like a plugin that gives you a real time shipping fees. Or if you just do flat rate shipping, which um, some mer merchants opt to do just because it's less complex, um, then you don't really need a plugin for that. You could just set a flat rate with within WooCommerce built-in features. 
but again, it, it just, it depends what you need. You just got to find what works for you and what you anticipate your customers asking for. So if you want to provide more choices for your customers, there's like a bunch of um, shipping method plugins that you could use with WooCommerce. Um, and these plugins like show live rates on your site without any work from you other than, than setting it up. Um, so you know like exactly, you can know exactly how much shipping is. Uh, you don't lose money on shipping, your customers don't lose money and they could choose between shipping providers if they want to. Um, and it also allows customers to pay more to have it shipped faster if they need it sooner. So I, I, if you have like a big shop and, and you want to provide like real-time rates for your customers, then choosing one of these shipping providers would be a good option for you. Another essential thing for shipping is shipment tracking. Um, all customers these days expect to be able to monitor shipping. Um, it's just an essential part of, of online shopping. If you're shopping online, there could be a lot of like uncertainty. So this also gives customers confidence that their item is coming. Uh, it builds trust, it increases customer happiness. Um, and for merchants, it lets you know where the package is if something goes wrong. Um, it could also reduce like support requests because like if customers don't know where their package is, they'll probably reach out to you. Um, I know I've done that when I haven't received like a shipment tracking email. So it's, it's basically a, an essential part of online shipping. And I, I recommend getting some sort of shipment tracking plugin for your site. Another thing you could do is postcode address validation. Um, it simplifies your checkout process by having your customers look up addresses during checkout. It makes checkout faster and more accurate. Um, you know that the thing you're shipping out is more likely to make it to the right place. Um, there's no typos. So basically how it works is a customer could type in like the first few letters of their address and then the address lookup pops up and then they could like choose the correct form of their address. Um, that could be helpful for your site if that's something you want to add. I know a lot of customers use like automatic fill-in forms these days also. So it might not something it might not be something that you absolutely need, but it would it would help reduce some friction during your checkout. Another one is uh, Local Pickup Plus, which became really popular during the pandemic out of necessity, but now it's just kind of become like a different, another option for customers to pick up. Um, so basically what this does is it allows your customer to pay online and pick up at the store. You also see it referred to as, um, as a click and collect also usually. Um, and I mean, that's, that's just helpful to give customers another option because maybe they don't want to pay for shipping or maybe they don't have time to go to a store and browse. Um, it's convenient and it's the popularity of this is only growing. It's not going, it's not going anywhere. So it's a good option for your store. If you're able to provide, um, those packages locally, I know for myself, like I've used, a uh, local pickup a lot just to avoid shipping uh, costs in a lot of cases, or if I want to get my product faster. Um, it's also great for restaurants and like any food type of business. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good option to have for your site if, if you're able to do that. Hmm, and that's it. That went by faster than I thought it would. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? That went by pretty fast. So if I missed something and you have questions, please let me know. Uh, 
Christine, what's your favorite thing about WordPress? About WordPress. And or WooCommerce. And or WooCommerce. Ooh. Um, well, if we're talking about WordPress in general, and I know there's some controversy around here, but I do really like the Gutenberg blocks. <laughs> yeah, I know some people hate it, but I like it if you need just like a simple site and you don't want to deal with troubleshooting. Um, just using one of the default themes and just setting up the blocks how you want and be done with it. <laughs> but I like WooCommerce for a lot of reasons. Um, it's just a really affordable way to have an online store compared to other options like Shopify where there's a large monthly fee. Um, but I also know that WooCommerce uh, it also gets confusing because there's so many plugins you could use and there's so many ways you could break your site, um, like with themes and updates. So yeah, I guess it's my favorite, the flexibility is my favorite thing, but also not my favorite thing. 